Hello, my name is Sarah Saunders and I am a program manager for NRCS Utah. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about the recently released Conservation Innovation Grant Notice of Funding Opportunity. The Conservation Innovation Grant or CIG program is a voluntary competitive program that supports the development of new tools, approaches, practices, and technologies. CIG is administered as part of the NRCS's Environmental Quality Incentives Program, or EQIP. The purpose of CIG is to stimulate the development and adoption of innovative conservation approaches and technologies on farms, ranches, and forest lands. These grants really do not fund research projects. The program is designed to aid the adoption of measures that have been successfully studied to indicate a high likelihood of success. This funding opportunity is open to all non-federal entities and individuals from the United States. There is up to $200,000 available for 2023 with a maximum award amount of $200,000 and a minimum award amount of $20,000. 10% of the funding is set aside specifically for applications from historically underserved groups. You can find the application package on grants.gov by searching the opportunity number listed here. All applications are submitted through grants.gov. The deadline to apply is 1159 p.m. Eastern Time on July 8th, 2023. There will be no latex applications that are accepted, so you'll need to be sure to get in your application by 9.59 Utah time, um, July 8th, 2023. For a link to the NFO and some more information on the CIG program, you can visit the Utah NRCS CIG website, which is listed here. Now I'm gonna go over some of the eligibility and requirements for the CIG program. Some of these I've already covered, but I'm gonna go now a little bit more in depth. All individuals and entities may apply as long as they are not federal employees or work for a federal government agency. All projects must take place wholly in Utah. Each project must bring a non-federal match, and that matching requirement is 50% of the total project cost needs to be a non-federal match. There is a special consideration that we're giving to projects that substantially involve or benefit historically underserved producers or groups of producers. That special consideration is a reduced matching requirement so for applicants that qualify as historically underserved, only 33% of the total project cost is required to be a non-federal match. Another requirement is that each pro project must present an innovation. SIG is very loose with the definition of innovation, but innovation accounts for 25% of the points when we're reviewing applications. And the final requirement is that each project must involve EQIP eligible producers. EQIP eligible producers have to be involved in some way, whether it's through a workshop or a training, um, they just need to be somehow involved in the project and the application and narrative should really describe this involvement. And if a CIG project results in a direct payment to producers, that recipient must meet the EQIP eligibility requirements. I 
I mentioned before that there are special considerations for historically underserved groups. CIG provides these special considerations to projects that substantially involve or benefit HU producers. The historically underserved definition is in the NFO, but there are four different categories. The first being a limited resource farmer or rancher. The second is a beginning farmer or rancher. The third is socially disadvantaged farmer or rancher. And the last is a veteran farmer or rancher. For more information on exactly what these definitions involve, you can find that on the, in the NFO and also the USDA website. And I encourage you to really think about how your project would benefit historically underserved producers, either directly or indirectly, and be sure to be really clear about that in the proposal. I mentioned before that there is a historically underserved set aside for this program. 10% of the total funds are available specifically for applications from either a historically underserved producer, a community-based organization comprised of representing or exclusively working with historically underserved producers on a CIG project, an entity developing an innovative conservation approach or technology that specifically targets the unique needs and limitations of historically underserved producers. Or finally, an 1890 or 1994 land grant institution or other minority serving institution. An applicant that's seeking to apply to this historically underserved set aside must identify as such in the cover page of their application. The applicant will also need to identify which historically underserved category applies to the proposal. And finally, the project narrative should describe how the project is designed to target the unique needs and limitations of historically underserved producers. There is a matching requirement for the Conservation Innovation Grant Program. Awardees must provide a non-federal funding match or cost share that's at least equal to the amount of federal funding requested. Um, like I mentioned before, there is a reduced matching requirement for HU applicants. Any match that's contributed by project partners does require a commitment letter at the time of application. You can find sample commitment letters in the application package on grants.gov. This matching can be cash contributions, in-kind contributions, or any combination, but awardees must maintain detailed and auditable records of these matching funds, as all projects are subject to matching fund verification audit. There's also a reporting requirement for this program. Awardees will be required to submit annual financial and performance reports. And this includes matching funds contribution reports. There's also a final report that is required at the end of the performance period. All 2023 proposals must address at least one of the following state priorities. The first priority is soil health. Proposals in this category must support the improvement or adoption of soil health practices in one or more soil health management principles, which are minimizing disturbance, maximizing biodiversity, maximizing soil cover, maximizing living roots, and integrating livestock. And proposals in this category should reflect a clear understanding of the soil health issues here in Utah. 
The second category is water optimization technologies. Proposals in this category must apply innovative technologies that address one of the following irrigation issues. The first is enhancing the efficiency, timing, and placement of irrigation water. The second is reducing the severity and extent of salinity through irrigation water management. And the third is mitigating the impacts of drought on irrigated cropland through innovations in cropping systems, tillage, or other cultural practices. And the final category is urban farming technologies. Proposals in this category must demonstrate innovative approaches or methods that will support the adoption of conservation practices or farming operations located in urban high density settings or develop an urban conservation farm showcase to provide training to urban farmers on urban conservation strategies. And as a reminder, if this is not an innovative idea, we really ask you not to apply. This program doesn't fund out, outreach for EQIP programs either. In terms of a project schedule, NRCS Utah anticipates making selections by August 2023 and expects to execute awards by September 2023. Projects may be between one and three years in duration, and applicants should plan their projects with an estimated start date of November 1st, 2023. If there's any questions, please feel free to email the contact listed in the NFO. Thank you.